Okay, I'd like to explain something that you're not going to read about in any book or in any video. I translate ancient Greek, also translate ancient Prakrit, Pali, and uh, also translate uh, Romanized Sanskrit. And I used to translate Russian. I was always told by my professors that I was a prodigy, an off-the-scale prodigy in learning ancient languages. Not that that paid very well. But let's take a look at the Ureus, or the Naga. Now, as I told you in a prior video, the uh, snake and earliest symbolism, not later symbolism of uh, Christians and uh, further on, uh, represented uh, life, represented the soul. I've uh, given you Pali passages, and uh, there are passages uh, in the, by the Platonists that refer to the snake as the soul. It was a perfect symbolism for the soul. It was also called in uh, the Rig Veda, and also the Engotorneke, and the Udana, and the Iributaka, and the uh, Diganeke of Book 2, and the uh, Majimaneke, the footless one, meaning a snake doesn't leave tracks like a human being. So it was a perfect analogy for the soul. And uh, let's uh, take a look at understanding what this particular symbolism means. And let's get, I'm going to move really fast, very quickly here. And I'm going to teach you something that you'll not read about anywhere else. Now, why is this flowing from this uh, eye in this iconography of uh, uh, this ancient Egyptian iconography? This is actually an amulet sort of from the tomb of uh, King Tut uh, Ankamun. And this is the soul. Now it's actually flowing from the eye. But we have two eyes. We're talking about the eye of the sun versus what has actually been called in other texts the black sun, or the, uh, the sun of the human eye, which actually takes in the light of the solar sun. Why is this located here? And why, for example, does the cheetah represent so uh, prominently in a lot of ancient uh, Egyptian iconography, symbolisms, and amulets? You can actually see the tear ducts of a human, of, a, of the uh, cheetah, which is actually no different than the tear ducts of a human. Not radically different. Let's uh, actually explain multi layered symbolism and the metaphysics of this symbolism as actually defined by the ancient Egyptians and what it actually means. Here we'll take a look at another symbolism. And uh, this is actually a bracelet of the eye. The cobra with its uh, hood spread was always uh, a representation uh, of the, uh, the sun. As you can see here, the actual solar sun. Now, uh, I've already said that the cobra is uh, the soul. So why are we talking about a cobra that can bite you and give you death? Is there a contradiction here in the ancient Egyptian and uh, Greek and Indian symbolism between uh, the naga or the cobra and uh, that of life? And the answer is no. You have to understand what the Egyptians actually understood this to represent. And I'm about to tell you. The eye is the sun, but it's the black sun of the iris, the actual human eye, which actually takes on the light or the life from the solar sun. Now, why is this cobra emanating from the tear ducts? Now, obviously, they took this from the human face, and they took this specifically uh, from uh, the uh, cheetah face. We actually have a snake passage winding of tears, which is water. There are two things that denote life. And this is a universal principle in ancient metaphysics from the Greeks, the Indians, and the Egyptians, is that you have to have two constituents for life. Well, three, ultimately. But uh, two, uh, two primary principles. One is water, i.e. tears. And secondly, you have to have the soul. Okay, so here we have the winding snake, or the naga, emanating from, just as the Nile winds around uh, the uh, Egyptian uh, river delta, we have a multi-layered symbolism. So what are we talking about here? Tear ducts follow a tract, a track, excuse me, on the face, just as the Nile winds around the lands like a snake. See, life, of course, is the soul, is the naga, or the snake, and we are talking about the actual tears of life, literally the waters of life. You see, there are two different layers, uh, well, there's actually four different layers, of the symbolism of uh, the solar sun versus the human sun. We're talking about the actual sun of light, and we talk about the black sun of the human eye, which gives both life, i.e. waters, but also gives death. And this is the meaning, the meaning and reason for the, the, the naga, the cobra in this case, which is not only a symbolism for life, but also a symbolism 
for death and the premise of life. We bemoan, of course, we know that tears equal two things when we talk about the tears of life. We talk about the tears of death over someone dying or of our own mortality. The waters of life and the waters of death is an ancient saying. But we're talking about what's the symbolism here? Why is it used specifically like this? And why, for example, is the Naga so prominent? like on the foreheads of the ureus of so many different uh, Egyptian symbolism. Okay, here we have the vulture of death, and here we have the naga of life, which actually springs from the head, i.e. the chitta, the nus, the spiritus sancta. Here we're talking about the principle of life or animation, the solar snake, which uh, has sprung from the solar sun. Let me go on to another book here. We could take a look. Here you can actually see the Naga springing from the solar sun and is looped through the Ankh, which of course is a representation of life, or in this case the symbolism is of the young child uh, Tut Ankhamun in uh, very earliest life. It's a premise of giving life to something. So we're talking about the tear ducts as representing the snake of life, the waters of life, but also of death. So the sun is the eye that gives life and light, and obviously the soul, the black sun, of the human eye, i.e. the center of the iris, which is black, this is what I mean by the black sun, gives both life, i.e. water, but also death. And this is the, the actual multi-layered symbolism of the actual Naga, is that it is not only the soul, but it is also the soul of death. Now here, instead of the snake, we have a representation of the arms emanating uh, from the tear duct section of the eye, which is actually giving life in this case. We have a hand giving forth life. So the symbolism is ripe and deep and multi-layered. So people never understood the actual symbolism and where it was coming from as far as the Naga springing. Let me open up the book to the appropriate place here. The Naga springing from the tear duct section of the eye. And you have to understand what this multi-layered symbolism is. It's literally the, the premise of life and the waters of uh, life, but also representation of the tears of human suffering over our own demise or someone else's demise. So we actually cry uh, due to the pain. So, And that's also the premise for the reason of using the cobra. The cobra has a hood which represents the uh, solar principle, but it also uh, gives death. Obviously you get a cobra bite. Ancient premise in ancient Egypt um, and in India. They, they, you know, they didn't have anti-venom back then. You get a bite from a cobra, more than likely you're going to suffer and die. So we have the premise of the Naga following the path of the tear ducts, just like a winding snake. It gives life and death. So, and below we have only the dual principles of life and death. You know, anything that's born is obviously going to die, but you have the solar principle of the Naga springing from the sun, as you can see in the tons of other iconography, where you have two different Nagas. You actually have the Naga of uh, the solar world, and you have uh, the Naga of uh, the snake, or the Ureus of uh, the human world. So there are two representations. You always see the uh, the solar disk with the uh, ureus springing from it, or you'll actually see this human ureus, which is the black sun, with a different uh, cobra or ureus uh, springing from it. So what we're looking at is the sun, that is the eye that gives life and light and soul, and then we have this, we have the black sun, the sun of the human eye, uh, that gives both life, i.e. the waters of life, uh, but also death, you know, the tears, the crying, of course the cobra venom, so this is the actual multi-multi-layered uh, symbolism of why the uh, snake is springing from the tear ducts in a winding fashion from the eye. We have the waters and the life uh, uh, the principle of that which gives life and also that which takes life. We have waters from the humanity that actually bemoans to give life but also which cries at uh, death. So. This is the uh, Naga of uh, the human world. So we have two different suns. We have the, we have the uh, fundamental principles which occur at every level in reference to the duality of uh, the solar sun versus the human sun. 
and as the black sun that takes life and light from the sun the, this eye of course takes in light from the sun so this is a symbolism of the Naga you can actually see here as well we have uh, life and we have the ureo springing from the tear duct here and so I hope I was able to clear that for you. You have to understand what the tear ducts represent and the symbolism of the ancient Egyptians and Greeks and uh, Indians is that these tear ducts follow us winding snake-like path, you know, just as the Nile winds. And we have the life, which is the soul, or the Naga, or the footless one. That's why the Naga has always been a representation uh, for the soul. And that's why you actually see the Uraeus on the forehead of so many uh, different uh, uh, hieroglyphs and also in uh, carvings and amulets and the golden mask here of uh, Tutankhamun and uh, this is what it represents it represents both life the soul the seed of consciousness but also ultimately since it's a cobra the venom of death so it represents both it represents uh, a different level of the Naga so, anyway I hope I cleared that up and uh, you saw it here first and uh, this is the first uh, explanation of what the symbolism actually meant to the ancient Egyptians and now you understand it very very clearly it is literally nothing other than the tears of life and death that which gives life that which takes life and the two different uh, forms of uh, uh, the solar sun the uh, the, uh, the black sun of the human eye which takes in the light of the uh, solar sun and the solar sun which actually gives uh, life and light but also that which gives life and light down here the human is also that which cries and bemoans so that which gives life is also that which represents the taking or the end of life so thanks for watching catch you later bye